Hello, my name is Bo, and I have some bad news regarding the D&D podcast video weird circle thing that expands when people talk thing. And this would be the second episode, but I screwed up. Plain and simple, I screwed up when recording all of the audio for us. I recorded my audio, didn't record anyone else's. So today I'm going to be doing a small little session where I talk about what happened. It's not as exciting, but hopefully it'll get the message across of what happened. Hope I hit everything. <laughs> Uh, yeah. To start off, I really would just want to, well, since I have my audio, I'm going to play the original poem thing that I do at the beginning of the sessions. Here you go. Right. So, to begin this session, I have a little passage to read again. There passed a weary time, each throat was parched and glazed each eye. A weary time, a weary time. How glazed each weary eye. When looking westward, eh, westward, I beheld a something in the sky. At first it seemed a little speck, and then it seemed a mist. It moved and moved, and took at last a certain shape, I wist. A speck, a mist, a shape, oh, I... I wist, and still it needed, neared and neared. Dear God, I cannot read. As if it dodged a water spire, it plunged and tracked and veered. With throats unslacked, with black lips blacked, we could nor laugh nor wail. Through utter drought, all dumb we stood. I bit my arm, I sucked the blood, and cried, a sail, a sail. So, today, I chose that poem, uh, its name, The Rhyme of an Ancient Mariner, by Samuel Taylor. And the poem's all about a guy who gets lost at sea, and he goes mad, in a sense. Or at least that's how I understand it, from when I read it. The reason I chose this is... Actually, no. Let's jump into what actually happens. All of the group leaves the little cottage of which they were at, and everyone but Kyle ate the berries. And I have them all roll a constitution saving throw, besides Kyle, because he didn't eat the berry. And the only one to fail this constitution saving throw was Ted, or Ty Lane. As a result, while they proceed along, they are walking along this little river, and all of a sudden, he starts to hear voices. He turns around to where the voices are, doesn't see anybody, but there's a couple bunnies, and he asks, who's out there? The bunnies run off into the forest, and some crows fly off into the distance. Then... They, he starts walking up that way, looks around, doesn't see anything, and they're like, uh, dude, what are you doing? He's like, looking for the voices, don't you hear them? Everyone looks at him like he's crazy, <laughs> as you probably would if you just saw someone talking to nothing. So they all travel down the river a little bit further, and after a little bit, he hears the voices again. And they're saying stuff like, oh, I think it's okay to go back out now. He, he turns around and screams, who's out there? The birds fly off, and he can hear rustling in the trees, like in the shrubbery beside him. So he starts sprinting into the forest, trying to find the source of this noise. The rest of the group falls in suit and 
my plan for them to get lost in the forest is in effect. They run off, they are running for a little while, and Tylane eventually stops in their tracks, unsure of where the voice could be, as they have not heard it in a little bit. Everyone comes up and is like, dude, what, what are you doing? It's, I'm, I'm looking for the voices, the voices in the forest. They all look at him like he's crazy. And as a result, they're like, okay, let's just go back to the stream. Um, Tylane leads. I, I think it's this way. They all start to follow. After a while, they have not reached the stream. And Tylane had rolled a three on their survival check, I think it was. I remember it being a three because, dear gosh. So they're now lost in the woods. Luckily, Chris, our ranger, uh, whose name... I can't remember right now. Tenalia is a ranger. And they're like, oh, I've been in the forest for a while. How long have we actually been here? Two hours. Oh, good. After an hour, I have the ability to just recall our path of which we've walked. So, as a result, Tenalia is able to lead everyone back to the stream. Tenalia. Gonna get mad if me if I don't get the name right. Give me one second. Tenalia. That's the name. Tenalia. Let's edit that back over the other parts. Tenalia. Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, it's close enough. So, Tenelia is leading the party now through the forest, as they are the ranger. She is walking along, and they find the part where it's like, oh, we definitely were here. The giant robot that Sidmund has uh, broke a couple trees here. And they fall the, the way back the way they came, Tenelia leading, and they make it back to the river. Tylane sits down and does some magic to see if any creatures are near. A, a divine sense of some sorts that was used to detect uh, good, evil. I think that's its name, detect good and evil. See what creatures are around. Doesn't sense anything in particular that's out of the norm. So... Tylane is just like, okay, whatever. Let's just continue along. They start heading down the river again. And they reach the fork in the river. This supposed fork. It actually isn't a fork in the river. It is a path. A old riverbed, as I described it. That branches off to the left. And the river branches off to the right. It's not an actual fork in the river. It's a fork of some sorts. And they were told, at the fork in the river, go to the left. Upon this fork, they see a bunny just hanging out there, drinking by the river. And what does everyone do? Of course! They try to kill the bunny. So we got Sinbind with his sling. Tenelia with... I think it's their bow that they used. And then we have Tylane, who just points a finger and shoots a magical bolt of magic. And as a result, the bunny is obliterated with this one bolt. From what Tylane or what Ted explains of Tylane's past is that they don't actually know they are part warlock. They are three levels paladin, two levels warlock. But they don't exactly know that themselves. So the spell they used, um Eldritch Blast, is the um warlock spell they use however they think they're using smite 
Eldritch Blast is what they consider their long-range smititude, as Ted would put it. (laughs) So this bunny is obliterated. All that's left is its head and a foot. And they go over, grab the head, toss it over to Kyle, or a boss, the lizard folk. And he just gobbles the head down. But... After a few seconds, they're about to start talking. However, a rumble echoes through the forest. A giant howl, if you will. It just booms through the area, right past their ears, echoes off the mountains behind them and comes back, reverberating them through their bones or whatever. At this point, I have them make a madness check, or sanity saving throw, however you would like to put it. As a result, mm, it is Tylane and a boss that fail the check. Tylane rolled a natural 1 with a negative negative 2 modifier for a total of negative 1. And a boss rolls, I think it's a 3 minus 1 for a 2. As a result, they go crazy. A boss looks up into the sky and sees this monstrous form. It's staring directly at him. And it's the source of what he thinks is the howl. Tylane starts getting a queasy feeling in their stomach and they just feel like puking. A boss then just turns around and starts sprinting back up the river. The rest of the group is like, no, 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 we gotta stay together. Uh, It is... what? Who does what? Oh. Tanelia does a spell that surrounds themselves with an aura of darkness. Uh, So other... It's a stealth type deal, to where other things would not be able to detect them. Pass Without Trace. They use Pass Without Trace to conceal them and the rest of the party. But Kyle's sprinting off in the wrong direction. Then, as a result, Sidmund uses a spell to uh, enlarge or deuce to shrink a boss down so he can't run as fast. And Sidman goes and tries to tackle Mrs. Then Mazdun, or Madison. <laughs> it's Ma- Mazdun on Discord. Madzun. Uh, whatever. Saul. Saul. Eh. Names. Gosh darn it. Sala. It's like salsa without the S. That's how I remember it. <laughs> Sala. Uh, casts sleep on our lizard folk, a boss, and he passes out. Uh, As a result, they all just huddle together, pull him back over, throw him on the robot, tie him up in his shrunken form, and they just head off on the riverbed path, ignoring the path to the right. After a little while, a boss wakes up, And he's looking around and he's seeing eyes in the trees, glowing red eyes and stuff like that. And he just sits there. He expands back to his normal size and starts getting suffocated by the ropes that he was tied up with. And they cut him off and he's doing all right. For a little while, he's still seeing stuff, but he shrugs it off in a sense. Nothing's attacking him, so he keeps a level head about it. But he's not sure what's going on. And then it is Tylane is still having their stomach aches, and we have a roll to see how bad it is. A just a throw up check is what we're going to call it. Tylane starts to gag as they roll pretty decently, so they don't throw up, but they feel awful. Hour or two goes by, and the hallucinations that the boss has. Uh, die off but Tylane's upset stomach persists as they rolled horribly and the time 
that I rolled was fairly high. And after a while, they see a couple bunnies just in the middle of the path. Three of them, to be precise. One in the center, two on the sides, and they kind of look at them. The two little, littler ones start running off into the distance, up the path. And the larger one turns around and stares at them with its cold black eyes. It's strange. It's interesting to see something acting like this. Then it's just like, okay. Uh, Chris wants to roll a, like, I think it's a nature check, as which he does. He rolls fairly high to inspect the bunny. I describe it as a bunny, <laughs> as best as I can. It's It's got white fur, black eyes. It, they're known to live in the forest. But you recall something. That the bunnies of the forest should not be trifled with. Alluding to the fact that he shouldn't mess with the bunnies. So, as a result, he sends his dog to chase down the bunny. The bunny's, like, trying to make fun of the dog. Haha, <laughs> you can't catch me. And the dog sprints off after it. And they sprint up the trail a little bit. He's like, uh, maybe we shouldn't. And he tries to call back his dog. He rolls decently high, but the dog doesn't listen. As it is trying to catch the bunny, which it was told to go get. And it's far away enough to where it doesn't hear him and rolls and stuff. And you guys know how D&D works. Dice. As a result, they're up the path. And the group just starts running after the dog as you normally would. They come to this clearing in the woods. It's grassy, kind of tall. And they see the dog halfway through the clearing. It, it's a circle, so they're one-fourth of the way through the clearing. At the center of the clearing, which would be halfway, is a giant tree. The tree of which they were warned not to go to. And at the tree stands the bunny, looking back on them. It's strange what it's doing. The dog is standing still, with its tail between its legs, not moving and looking around kind of fast. The group goes up to the dog, and the dog's, like, kind of scared. Suddenly, the bunny starts tapping its foot on the logs, and from all around them, they hear bunnies' feet on the ground. Hundreds of bunnies' feet tapping rhythmically, and they're like, oh no. It's, of course, that they've fallen into the bunny's trap. This is what I like to call the bunny enclave. <laughs> and, as a result, they know that they're in a bad spot. Suddenly, without much warning, to be honest, the bunny stands up on it, just its hind two legs, and it speaks to them in common. Insolent fools! I say it in a very high voice and it's dear god loud, but I don't want to peek my mic right now. Insolent fools! And the party is completely confused, not knowing what to do. I also describe this voice as similar to the ones that Ted was hearing throughout the forest. It's high-pitched, like I said. But it's similar to those voices, but not exactly the same. And it's pretty obvious that he was actually hearing the bunnies that they were seeing. It's interesting, but it's something that they had no clue that that was actually what was going on. It was hilarious. And right there, I end this session. Oh, it, 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 the group just, no, we want to know what happens, blah, 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 let's keep on going. It's been about two hours at that point. It's quite fun to see them all. What, what's going on? Why is the bunny talking? Ah. Oh, it was great.
But that's where we ended our session. I hope you all enjoyed my little summary of what happened. It was quite fun. <laughs> oh, I hope you uh, look forward to the next little session. That one, we've already actually recorded it. We recorded it last night. And I think that I got all of their voices. So you can look forward to that. That one's actually being broken into two parts because we played for a good long while. And we'll pick right back up with the group with a tiny, tiny bit of a summary of what happened this session. I'll go into my little poem and we'll proceed with this story. I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, share this to anyone you know, if they like D&D. I know this session isn't the most <laughs> normal of what we will be doing, but I wanted to get everyone understood of what happened this session. All right. Bye-bye.